From Hollywood, it's time now for Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. This is Bruce Hardwick, Mr. Dollar. Do you remember me? I think I do. You're with the Corinthian Life and Liability, aren't you? That's right. We have some work for you if you aren't busy. I'm not. Shoot. Good. Our New York office got a call from the police this morning. They had investigated some trouble on the east side and found one of our policies at the scene and wanted to find out what the company knew about the man it covered, which was very little. Well, what kind of trouble was it? Uh, nobody seems to know. All the signs of murder, I understand, but no body. Will you go down and see what you can make of it? Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Corinthian Life and Liability Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Richard Splain matter. Expense account item one, $35 trip from Hartford to the scene of the crime. A part of Manhattan where the citizens have been conditioned to sleeping through screams, gunshot, and even the odors. I was met by a homicide sergeant, and the tenement flat he took me to lived up to its first description. It did bear all the signs of murder, except a body. Well, it must have taken a long time to accomplish all this. The place rented in the name of Richard Splain. Yeah. What's the address on his insurance policy? It's the number on 2nd Avenue. How does the report read on this so far, Sergeant? You can see everything we saw, from the amount of busted furniture, a violent struggle, from the amount and placement of blood stains, a sustained beating of someone there by the radiator. Nobody heard it? Nobody cared if they did hear it. We've asked questions, but the people won't admit anything. They don't want to get involved. The landlady phoned us after she saw the door open and looked in. Any blood stains out in the corridor? Haven't found any. You seen enough? Yeah, I guess so. What's this? Uh, part of some wrecked ship models. Seem to be Splane's hobby, collecting them. Yeah, there's not much we can do. I put this flat under lock and key. We can hold it that way for a while and wait for him to come back, but that's about all. Until we have some concrete evidence. Like a body? That would help. Are you uh, going to wait for us, or... Follow it up yourself. Oh, I've got that address on second. That's his wife, isn't it? And beneficiary in the policy. I can't do much with her until she makes a missing persons report or something. And she hasn't. Yeah. Well, if I get anything from her, I'll let you know. <laughs> Expense account item two, a dollar and a half taxi to the Second Avenue address. Mrs. Plain was a rather dumpy blonde with tousled hair and half-applied lipstick. She obviously didn't want me to come in. Well, it's not that I don't want to help any way I could, Mr. Dollar. But I haven't seen much of Dick lately. We split up, you know. No, I didn't. Who came in here, Clara? Oh, it's something about Dick. Dick? Well, what about him? I'm sick of you getting bothered over that bum. Oh, now, Mark, hold your temper. This man is from the insurance. Mr. Dollar, this is Mr. Bond. How are you? Okay. What's insurance got to do with this? Splain had a policy on his life. Mrs. Splain is the beneficiary. I uh, guess I never told you, Mark. I almost forgot about it myself. It isn't very much. $35,000. How did you learn about what happened? It was the police phoned me, wanted to know if he was here. I told them the same as I told you. Well, I don't even know if Dick was in or out. What do you mean, in or out? In port or at sea. Oh. He worked on a boat. In his policy, he listed his occupation as a carpenter. Well, he used to be. But since the war, he's been a ship's carpenter. He's away all the time. That's one of the reasons I dumped him. That wasn't the worst. Mark, you talk to Mr. Dollar while I go on and put the rest of my mouth. Oh. I feel like I'm not half dressed. Well, what do you want to know about him? Whether he's dead or alive. You think he'd call Mrs. Plain if he was hurt and in trouble? No. I know for sure he wouldn't. When they quit, they met it. Has there been a divorce? Not yet. It costs money. She hasn't got any. I haven't. And if Splain has, he's not letting loose. 
Would you happen to know if there's somebody he would turn to? The police checked the hospitals without finding him. No, I, I don't know where he'd go. Hey, what makes you so sure Splain's the one that got messed up? Maybe he went to work on somebody else. That's what I was thinking. One thing I can tell you from experience. Vic can take care of himself. And he's mean. But honest, that's the very best I can do. Uh, okay, thanks. Here I put my hotel room number on my card in case you want to phone. And I'll let you know if anything develops. Expense account item three, a dollar and a half to Splain's flat. I decided that it would be easier to learn there the name of his last chip. And with that, I hoped to find someone who was closer to him than his wife. Sergeant Burns was no longer there, but a liar, too, got a pass key from the landlady, and I went in. The top drawer of the battered bureau produced not only what I was looking for, but more. The name of the ship was the Tangier, and an envelope that contained a seaman's papers also contained a small address book with enough names and addresses to keep at least one investigator happy. I started to jot them down, but got no more than halfway through. I hope you don't mind, Sergeant. Hey, I... hey, hey, hey. What's all this? Who are you? A friend of Splain's. I heard you moving in here and thought he was in. What happened? Shut the door. Hey. What a mess. Nobody seems to know what happened. Who are you? A cop? Private type. You explain dead? Who'd want to kill him? I don't know. I was only asking. All that blood and everything busted up. Look, I don't want to get mixed up in it. I, I just knew him like in the bar sometime. Wait a minute. Come on, what's the idea? Shorty, I want you to tell me about Dick's no, plane. No, 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 stay off me. I don't know much about him. You knew enough to walk through his door before anyone answered it. Well, sure, I do that sometimes. I, I come to talk to him sometimes when he's in from a trip. I can't go to them places. He tells me about them. I like to hear about Tangier and them places. And he shows me them ship models he makes. Do you know any of the people he does? Well, all I know is where he's been. He never stays in more than a week. <laughs> he eats at Sweeney's sometimes. That's just across the street. I can't help you, mister. Let me go. Come What's on, your name? I don't make no difference what my name is. I don't want to get mixed up in something I don't know anything about. Come on, now, please, give me a break, will you? Okay, hey. okay. What are you reaching for? My wallet. Will ten bucks pay for your time? <laughs> sure will. Thank you. You're a good guy. I'm sorry I can't help you more. Expense account item four, ten dollars, peace offering. I had a feeling I'd paid for lies with it and covered the possible loss by tailing the rabbity little man to an address a few blocks away. His name turned out to be Paul Krell. What was left of the afternoon was spent on routine legwork, and at six I was on the phone in my hotel room. Sergeant Burns. This is Dollar, Sergeant. Oh, how'd you make out? I've got nothing. Splain and his wife separated and can't afford a divorce. She's taken up with a guy named Mark Bond. But they both say they haven't seen or heard from Splain for a long time. Yeah, a lot of people don't know anything about that guy. Yeah. Uh, it seems he's a ship carpenter. I got the name of his ship and went aboard. He's been with it for a couple of years, same one. Plies between here and North African ports. Those people don't know much about any of their crewmates' shore life, so I didn't get much few names I can check tomorrow. What's the ship? The Tangier, White Flag Line, Pier 80 on the East River. Have you run into anything? I'm still waiting. Well, you've got my hotel. Yeah, thanks for calling, Dollar. Something may turn up tonight. If it does, I'll phone you first thing in the morning. Johnny Dollar. This is Clara Splain, Mr. Dollar. Oh, hello. I gotta see you right away. Sure, what's up? They arrested Mark. You know, you met him. Yeah. They found your husband? Yeah, last night. I've been down to the morgue already this morning to identify him. Yeah. Where are you now? I'm right downstairs from you in the lobby. All right, Clara, come on up. <laughs> Tell 
him about us marking me. Nothing that would put the heat on Mark by itself. If they're holding him, they, they must know more. I think he's lying myself. He... he couldn't prove where he was when the police said my husband died. Are you sure you didn't mention that $35,000 policy to Mark? I uh, don't think I ever did. No, no, I'm sure of it. Why did you come here? What do you want me to do? I'm, I'm trying to get up my nerve, Mr. Dollar. The real reason that I left Dick was because I found out something awful that he was doing. Such as? He built little boats, models, and they were hollow. He brought dope into the country inside of them. I didn't tell the police that because I was afraid of what they'd do to me for knowing all this time. You should be. Did Mark know about it? No, I never told anybody. But maybe it's important now. You're right. True or untrue, it is important. On the way back to the Splain flat, I lined up the things that bore out her story. One, the remains of the ship models in his wrecked room. Two, the possibility that Paul Krell may have been a narcotics buyer. And three, the address book that could have contained a list of customers. But I didn't have a chance to do any more probing when I got there. The place was under police investigation. That's far enough, mister. Nobody goes inside. Is Sergeant Burns up there? What of it? Well, I've been working with him on this. My name is Dollar, insurance investigator. All right. I'll pick you up. Thanks. What's all the activity? Uncover something? Just another body. What? Yeah. First, not enough, now too many. Who can figure these things? I could figure it when I got to Splain's door. Now the evidence I'd tampered with concerned two murders. The body of Paul Krell lay beaten to death in the middle of the wrecked room. In just a moment, we'll return to the second act of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Edmund O'Brien. But first... How's for trying to sing it again tonight? $5,000 in cold, hard cash and $10,000 in fine prizes are waiting for the CBS listener who can solve the Phantom Voice mystery. Dan Seymour will be on hand with those coast-to-coast -coast phone calls again. Alan Dale, Eugenie Baird, Bob Howard, and the Riddlers will be making the music. And remember, there's many a fine prize for solving the tuneful riddle songs that lead to the Phantom Voice mystery. It's an hour of fun and music to entertain you and perhaps pay off every Saturday night on most of the same CBS station. Here's Sing It Again tonight, won't you? And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Yeah? The guy says he knows you, wants to come in. Keep him out. Oh, Dollar. How does this happen you're showing up here? I got tired waiting for your call. You were going to phone this morning if anything broke. Oh, I was, huh? What kind of cooperation is this? I gave you everything I got yesterday. Almost, huh? The landlady tells me you came back here yesterday. You know, it's things like that that lose licenses for guys like you. Climb down, Sergeant. You gave me the nod to go ahead without waiting for the police. Not to mess around with evidence. I'm on the verge of putting you away 48 hours for questioning. Don't talk me into it if you don't want to go. Stay out of my hair. Okay, Sergeant. I guess we've put our cards on the table. What'd you come back here for yesterday? To get the name of Splain's ship. I figured it would be easier to get it here than by making the rounds of the hiring halls. I told you what I got out of it, a few names. Mm, come here. There's only one change when we came back here to find this body top drawer of the bureau was standing open. This envelope was torn with this stuff dumped on the top. Did you do this? No. Hey, don't touch that. Keep your hands where they belong. We're dusting that stuff for prints. Sorry. I guess I'd better get out of here, Sergeant, before you and I lock horns. You're beginning to make sense, Dollar. I thought I was, too. At least hoped so. The notebook from which I'd copied the list of names and addresses wasn't among the other articles dumped on the bureau top. But Sergeant Burns' threat to hold me for 48 hours made it easy to keep my mouth shut about it and about my having met Krell. Oh, 
Oh. Oh, did they let Mark loose? Don't be funny. Of course they didn't. Well, did you tell them about the little boats in there? I thought it was better not to. There's been another murder at your husband's place. Who? A little guy named Paul Krell. That name mean anything to you? I never heard it before. What's it all about? A lot of people are wondering. Where was Mark Bond last night? Oh, they don't think he did that one, too. I didn't ask. But I know how their minds work. They'll accuse Mark of going back to cover tracks. Where was he? He was right here with me. Any witnesses to prove that? There's me. I know he was here, don't I? Under $35,000 circumstances, that's hardly enough. How do I know this narcotics tale of yours is true? I don't get it. Why would I admit it if it wasn't true? It's liable to get me in a lot of trouble, isn't it? It could throw up a whale of a smokescreen for Mark, too. All right, I'll show you something. I got one hid in the closet. Didn't hear something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one he called a frigate. First, you, you have to set it on something. Yeah, then you twist this thing, a mast, I think. And this part opens up. Let me see that. Ah, that's pretty. Dick was always good with his hands. This is the only thing of his I got. Well, maybe a chemist can prove whether or not it carried narcotics. I can't. But assuming that was the case, who did he sell to? I don't know. I didn't want that kind of money, and the minute I found out one night, I, I told him to get out and never mention it again. That's too bad. If he was cutting in on a combination, that might account for his death. But if he was playing ball with them, it's something else. Which brings us right back to your boy, Mark. Have you thought of that? I know he didn't do it. If I thought he did, would I look you up? I'm taking the other approach. If he was innocent... Why would you bother tossing me this model ship bone to chew on? Expe Expense account, item five, twenty-five dollars blanket item covering transportation for the rest of the day. At the address of Paul Krell, I learned what I believed to be the truth, that his association with Splain was no more than a friendly one. From the list of names I'd copied, I picked Jerome Kentner, who had the closest address. An apartment about $250 a month away from the park. Yes? Mr. Jerome Kentner? Yes. I'd like to talk to you about a man named Richard Splain. What about... I don't know any. I've given myself away, haven't I? Yes, I'm afraid so, Mr. Kentner. But you don't have to be afraid of me. I'm not a policeman. Oh, I suppose you want to come in. I think I'd better. All right. What is it? Splain is dead. He was murdered night before last. Oh, that's bad, isn't it? How did you find out about me? There's a list of names in his rooms. Yours was one of them. You bought narcotics from him? Ship models. I collect them. Don't you see them there in the case? Yeah, I noticed. Who are you and what do you want? A private investigator. I want to find out who killed Splain. I didn't. Why would I do that? I don't know. When did you last see him? Well, it wasn't the night before last. I don't think I have to answer all these I questions. don't want to blackmail you into answering them, but I will if I have to. It was last week sometime. Tuesday, I think. How well did you know him? I met him, that's all. Met him through a friend of mine. What's this friend's name? Go ahead and blackmail. I'm not talking anymore. Hmm? Suit yourself. I'll leave my phone number in case you change your mind. The next two stops yielded nothing. The names were either conveniently or coincidentally out of town. The next, Miss Francine Wells, an address on 82nd Street. Uh, Miss Francine Wells, please. In regard to what? Well, I'd rather tell her if you don't mind. I'm afraid I'll have to insist. Uh, are you a salesman? No, I'm not a salesman. It's Miss Wells in. Young man, you have to tell me who you are. Someone for me, Dad? I was expecting Fred, remember? Yes, I remember, and this gentleman is not Fred. Oh? Good afternoon. Hello. I'd like to talk to you if I could, Miss Wells. What about? I don't know you, do I? No, you don't, but it's important that I speak to you in private, if possible. Dad... 
be a good guy and go in the other room for a minute. And leave you alone with this stranger? I will not. Oh, come on. It's probably something about work. Oh, if it is, why must it be so private? I'll tell you later. And if I need help, I'll scream. Now, if it is that private, keep it low. He'll be listening. What's it all about? Richard Splain. Who? Richard Splain. Who did you ask for here? I mean, there's been a mistake. You must have come to the wrong place. If your name is Francine Wells, I haven't. It was that name and address I found in this flat. How on earth would my name and address get into the apartment of a man I never heard of? Unless we have mutual friends or something. Maybe you do. Your name was only one of a dozen or more. I don't understand at all. Who is this Richard Splane? Well, maybe you knew him without knowing his name. He sold narcotics. He's been murdered. No. What'll I do? I am a pushover for shocker, aren't I? I'm sorry. It just worked out that way. You aren't sorry. Well, sit down. I guess you're going to stay a while. I'll stand up. I knew this day would get here. I dreamed about it. Here it is. What happened? Well, I'm not being paid to press the narcotics charge. I'm trying to find out who killed him. Being paid? By his insurance company. When did you see him last? A day or two ago. What, what are these names you mentioned? So far, all customers. You have the list? I made a copy of it. And you think that one of them is the name of whoever killed this... this plane? I really didn't know his name. How did you run into him? I don't think that's important. I was introduced to him by a friend. Not a man named Mark Bond, by any chance. Or a woman named Clara, Splane's wife? No, I, I don't know anything about him. Just enough to watch for the date of his ship when it was due to arrive. I suppose the government man would be the next to show up at my door. Well, it's not up to me. I can't promise you any help, but I... I want you to look at this list of names and tell me if you know any of them. Anything I can do, I will do. No, I don't know any of them. I feel sorry for them. I don't want to sound as if I feel sorry for myself. I don't. I was going to say I thought he deserved to be killed, but it's not his fault any more than it's the fault of... Oh, what difference does it make? I want to leave my card with you in case there's something you haven't told me. I'll jot down my hotel. Most of the others I got to were pretty much the same. Mixtures of fear, desperation, sometimes defiance, and usually fatalism by the end of it. I arbitrarily set the name J.L. Tucker as the last for that day. He lived in a cold water spread close to Greenwich Village, and he was different. Doesn't make any difference who knows it. I've been through these things before, so you're wasting your time. You ask me how I got in touch with Splane? <laughs> I knew his wife, that's how. She was shilling for him before they got tired. Go ask her. Here's her address. <laughs> Dollar, I just left a man named Tucker. He said he knew you. I thought I'd better call. Oh, Tucker. How'd you find him? He tells me you made the contacts for your husband before you separated. That's a lie. Why would he say it? Well, I knew about Tucker. One night he came up. He, he admitted he was looking for somebody, and well, I told him about Dick. I didn't know what I was doing. I was stiff. I've spent a long day, and we're back to you, Chubby. Now, look, don't decide to leave town. Expense account item six, four dollars dinner at my hotel. Item seven, same amount, a few brandies at the bar. I had the idea I'd spent a lot of energy for nothing until the elevator dropped me at my floor and I turned the corner toward my room. It's all right. If you left your card with me, you must have expected something. I left my card a lot of places. I didn't expect you, Miss Wells. You don't seem to have had any other take. Come on in. Well? You said if there was anything else I wanted to tell you. Yeah? 
Well, uh, there is. It goes a long way back. I, I don't know how these things happen to some people and not others. I was no angel, but I was all right. Come on. Come on, sit down over here. I've always told myself that some people get bitten by rattlesnakes and others don't. But it's not the same. It was in school after a party. And neither one of us had any sense. He got it from somebody. Who was this? In Pennsylvania. His name was Phil. I, I don't know. I came home, never saw him again. But that was the start of it. It was only two years ago. I knew it would end. I kept wondering how. Now it has it. What are you trying to tell me? I killed Richard Splane. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Why? Because I went to him without any money, and he laughed at me. I don't know what happened to me. I picked up something and started to hit him. I hit him. I hit him. Why didn't you tell me this before? Because I thought I could go through with it. But I can't. If it happened this time, I don't want to go on anymore. I went to him without any money, and I picked up the first thing I touched and started to beat him. What was that? I don't even remember. An andiron? Yes, I think that's what it was. And Paul Krell, you killed him too? Yes. I don't know. Yes, I did. I must have. And I don't care. I don't care. Well, that was a good try, but it won't work. This wasn't a woman's killing, no matter how desperate she was. You want me to go? Or do you want to stay here? Please. Please, I did it. I did it. Isn't that enough? Haven't I done enough? Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid you have. <laughs> You. Where's my daughter? I want to talk to you about her. Where is she? Mr. Wells, somewhere in this apartment, if you haven't destroyed it, is a piece of very important evidence. What's that you say? A notebook containing a lot of names, among them your daughter's. Oh, she told you this? Well, hardly. She was trying to protect you. She confessed to killing Richard Splane. They haven't arrested her. Not yet. She was lying, you know that. I'm afraid I do, Mr. Wells. Uh, I'm glad. I told her about it after I heard you leave. Are you married? No. If you were, and you were my age, and had a daughter, you'd understand. You know what it's like to watch her change. I didn't know for a long time. I wondered, and I followed her. And when I learned the truth, I killed him. Surely you, you don't blame me. I turned Wells over to the police, not Sergeant Burns, and heard him explain his second killing, that of Paul Krell, who had arrived as Wells was looking for any trace his daughter might have left at Splane's. Remarks? Don't question the policy payoff to Clara Splane, in spite of the fact that she hardly deserves it. Expense account item seven, same as item one. Expense account total, $375. Yours truly... Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role and is written by Gil Dowd with music conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Edmund O'Brien may soon be seen in the Paramount Pictures production, Warpath. Featured in tonight's cast were Herb Butterfield, Raymond Burr, Joe Gilbert, Bill Boucher... Howard McNear, Barry Kroger, and Mary Lansing. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bob Stevenson inviting you to join us next week at this time when we'll again bring you Edmund O'Brien as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.
Have you met the Coopers, Liz and George? They're the young married couple who keep things humming and keep you laughing in that hilarious domestic comedy, My Favorite Husband, broadcast every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. So tune in every Saturday night to My Favorite Husband. And now stay tuned for Vaughn Monroe's Caravan, which follows immediately over most of these same Columbia stations. This is CBS, the star's address, the Columbia Broadcasting System.